Imagine waking up in a world overrun by the undead where survival is the only goal and the stakes are your life. You blink open your eyes to a chilling dawn, the eerie silence punctuated by the occasional distant groan. Cities once bustling with life now lie abandoned, their skeletal structures a grim reminder of a world that once was. The streets are no longer filled with the hum of traffic, but with the staggering gait of zombies, their vacant eyes devoid of any semblance of the humanity they once housed. This isn't your typical morning. The world as you know it has been replaced by a dystopian landscape where the rule of law has been usurped by the law of survival. The currency is no longer paper or coin but food, water and shelter. The only thing that matters is living to see another sunrise. In the heart of this chaos, your home transforms into a fortress, your sanctuary against the relentless undead. You craft makeshift barricades, your domestic bliss, now punctuated with the raw, utilitarian edge of survival. Every creak, every rustle of the wind sends adrenaline coursing through your veins, a constant reminder of the lurking danger outside. You navigate through the days, rationing your dwindling supplies constantly on high alert. The once mundane task of fetching groceries now feels like a covert operation, a life-or-death gamble against a horde of walking corpses. Yet, amidst the fear and uncertainty, there's a glimmer of hope, a testament to the indomitable human spirit. In the face of this apocalyptic nightmare, you realize that your survival hinges not on brute force, but on your wit and resourcefulness. You tap into your primal instincts, harnessing your ingenuity to outsmart the undead. You learn to live off the land, to harness the power of the sun, to distill water from dew. You learn to be self-sufficient, to adapt, to endure. This is your reality now. A world where the dead walk and the living must fight to stay alive. But remember, in such a world, survival is not about strength, but about strategy. So, what would you do? In a zombie apocalypse, the initial panic might be about outrunning the undead, but the real challenge? Long-term survival. You see, when the world descends into chaos, the first instinct is to run, hide, and survive the immediate threat. It's a primal response hardwired into our DNA, but that's only half the battle. The real test of survival isn't about evading the undead for a day or two. It's about enduring the aftermath for months, even years. Immediate solutions like canned food and bottled water will only last so long. And once they're gone, you're back to facing the grim reality. That's why long-term survival strategies are crucial. They're about creating a sustainable way of life when everything else has crumbled. They're about harnessing the basics, food, water, energy, in a world where the conveniences we once knew are gone. So, let's delve into the key strategies to keep you safe, fed, and alive for the long haul. Scene script. First things first, food. And in a world gone rogue, the supermarket won't be an option. In the face of a zombie apocalypse, your survival will hinge on your ability to adapt, and one of the most crucial adaptations is the ability to grow your own food. Agriculture, folks, is not a luxury, but a necessity. Imagine this. The world as we know it has been swept away. The aisles of your local supermarket, once brimming with food, are now barren wastelands. You're going to have to get your hands dirty and sow the seeds of your survival, literally. Starting a survival garden is not about planting a few tomatoes and hoping for the best. You need to choose the right crops. Think hardy, nutrient-rich, and easy to grow. Potatoes, beans, squash, and corn are all excellent choices. They are packed with essential nutrients, require minimal care, and can be stored for long periods. But it's not just about what you plant, it's about how you plant. Crop rotation and companion planting can help keep your soil rich and your plants healthy. Rotate your crops each year to prevent soil depletion and disease. Plant companions that benefit each other, like beans and corn, which together provide mutual support and nutrients. Having a seed bank is also essential. It's your insurance policy against crop failure. Save seeds from your strongest plants each season, and you'll have a ready supply for the next planting. And don't forget about protein. Raising small livestock like chickens or rabbits can supplement your diet and provide a source of natural fertilizer for your garden. Remember, this is not just about survival, but about sustainability. In the long run, your goal should be to create a self-sustaining food ecosystem. So, there you have it. In a world gone rogue, a green thumb might just be your best weapon. Start planning your survival garden today because when the zombies come knocking you don't want to be caught with an empty pantry. Remember, when it comes to survival you reap what you sow. In this new world, energy is a luxury. But with the right strategies, it's a luxury you can afford. 
let's dive into the significance of renewable energy sources and how to harness them effectively. In a post-apocalyptic world, traditional energy sources like fossil fuels will be scarce or inaccessible, but the sun, wind and water will still be there. These are renewable energy sources that you can tap into, even in the face of a zombie apocalypse. Let's start with solar energy. Solar panels are a viable and sustainable way to generate electricity. They capture sunlight and convert it into energy. This energy can be used to power your safe house, recharge your devices, or even run a small farm. Next, there's wind energy. Wind turbines can be constructed from salvageable materials. They work by converting the kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical power. This can be used for pumping water or generating electricity. Hydropower is another option. If you're lucky enough to be near a flowing water source, you can set up a small-scale hydroelectric system. The moving water can power a turbine, generating electricity for your survival enclave. Don't forget about bioenergy. You can create biofuel from organic materials like plant waste or animal manure. This can be used for cooking, heating, or powering a generator. And lastly, there's geothermal energy. If you're in a region with volcanic activity, you can harness the heat from the Earth's crust to generate electricity or heat your home. In the face of a zombie apocalypse, these renewable energy sources can be the difference between life and death. Not only can they provide you with essential electricity, but they can also help you maintain a level of comfort and normalcy in an otherwise chaotic world. But remember, harnessing renewable energy isn't just about setting up solar panels or wind turbines. It's about understanding how to store that energy effectively. Investing time in learning about batteries and energy storage systems will pay off in the long run. Harnessing renewable energy is not just about comfort, it's about survival. Water is life, but in a post-apocalyptic world, clean water is gold. Imagine a world where every drop of water could be the difference between life and death. Survival hinges on two things, how to collect water and how to purify it. Remember, in this new world, water isn't just about quenching thirst, it's about sustaining life itself. Let's start with collection. Rainwater is a great source of water in many regions. To collect it, you'll need a rain catchment system. This can be as simple as a large, clean container placed in an open area. If you're fortunate enough to have a roof overhead, gutters can direct rainwater into storage barrels. But remember, even rainwater needs to be purified. Snow and ice are also options if you're in a colder climate, they can be melted for water. But never eat snow or ice directly as it lowers body temperature and could lead to hypothermia. For those in drier climates, digging a solar still is an option. This involves digging a hole, placing a container in the center, covering the hole with a clear plastic sheet, and placing a small rock in the center of the sheet. The condensation from the ground will collect on the underside of the sheet and drip into the container. It's a slow process but it works. Now, on to purification. Boiling is the simplest and most effective way to purify water. It kills most types of disease-causing organisms. Another method is using purification tablets or drops. These are lightweight, inexpensive and easy to carry. They kill bacteria, viruses and parasites. However, they don't remove chemical contaminants. A more advanced method is using a portable water filter. These filters can remove bacteria, parasites and often chemicals. They're more expensive, but are a good investment for long-term survival. Lastly, solar disinfection is a method that involves filling a clear plastic or glass container with water and leaving it in the sun for a minimum of six hours. The ultraviolet light kills harmful bacteria and viruses. Remember, clean water isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. In a world where tomorrow is uncertain, it pays to prepare today. The key to long-term survival in a post-apocalyptic world, particularly one overrun by the undead, is not just finding food, but preserving it. The first thing to understand about food preservation is that it's not just about keeping your food edible longer, it's about maintaining as much nutritional value as possible. You see, in times of scarcity, every nutrient counts. There are several methods of preserving food, each with its unique benefits. The method you choose ultimately depends on what resources you have available. Canning, for instance, is a tried-and-true method that has been around for centuries. It involves sealing food in airtight containers and subjecting them to heat to kill or weaken any microorganisms that could cause spoilage. Canned foods can last for years and require no energy to store, making them ideal for long-term survival. Then there's dehydration. Removing the water content from food not only makes it last longer but also significantly reduces its weight, making it easier to transport. 
The downside, however, is that you need a reliable source of heat to dehydrate food, and the process can deplete certain nutrients. Freezing, on the other hand, preserves the most nutrients, but requires a constant source of energy to maintain the low temperature. This might not be feasible in a post-apocalyptic world, but if you have access to a renewable energy source like solar power, it could be an option. Lastly, there's fermentation. This method not only preserves food but can also enhance its nutritional value by promoting the growth of beneficial bacteria. However, it requires a bit more skill and knowledge to do right. In the end, your survival won't just depend on finding food, but on how you preserve it. Because when you're facing the worst, the last thing you want to worry about is your next meal. In the face of uncertainty, being prepared is your best bet. In a world overrun by the undead, survival is a game of strategy. As we've explored, long-term survival is more than just fighting off zombies, it requires planning and preparation. We've unearthed the importance of agriculture, of sowing seeds to ensure a reliable food source. We've delved into the power of renewable energy, harnessing the sun and wind to keep the lights on when the grid goes down. We've tackled the vital role of water, not just for drinking but for hygiene, and the importance of knowing how to collect and purify it. We've also underscored the significance of long-term food storage, of preparing for the worst while hoping for the best. These strategies are your lifelines, your shields against the undead. They are the keys to not just surviving but thriving in a world turned upside down. Remember in the face of a zombie apocalypse these strategies could be the difference between life and death. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more survival tips.